In this video, we will show how to change file formats between Plink and VCF. For those of you who correctly recognize that this is a remake of an already existing video, or for those who are interested why this remake happened, there is a short explanation at the end of the video. The new parts compared to the previous version are the consideration or the information about the minor, major, or reference alias status for the VCF, and also extracting VCF files for one individual at a time. But before we get there, let's see how to change file formats from Plink to VCF and vice versa from VCF to Plink. From Plink to VCF, it is quite straightforward. So you use any data you want, basically already in Plink format, and you use a dash dash recode statement or option with the VCF modifier. After we run this, we get the VCF file with the name that we specify in the dash dash out statement. Now there is a little warning here that underscores are present in sample IDs in this particular example. Here it is not a problem, but it will become an issue if you want to transform VCF IDs to Plink file, which contain underscores. So let's demonstrate this situation and this possible source of error. But first things first, the overall structure of changing VCF files to Plink files is very similar to the previous one. So basically you use the dash dash VCF Plink option, and then basically you specify the file name. Here I would underline that the VCF file requires the full file name. And here I just change to the one that I changed already. So it has to be, in our case, example file .vcf. So while the dash dash file does not require the .pad and .map file extensions, the dash dash vcf does require the .vcf file extension here. So it should be written exactly like this. And we want to create pad and map files. So we just use the plain dash dash recode statement. Yes, but after we run this, we run into this error. It says multiple instances of underscore in a sample ID. But Plink already gives us very helpful suggestions how to solve this problem. The core of the problem is explained here on the Plink website, and it says that the VCF file just contains sample IDs instead of distinct family and within family IDs. The delimiter between the FIDs and the IIDs happens to be the underscore. So if you have all, an underscore also in your normal ID, then you end up with more than one underscore in the ID for the VCF file. So Plink, when tries to transform it back, actually doesn't know which underscore to use to divide the FID from the IID when creating pet files. So my very first suggestion, avoid underscores in your IDs for your individuals whenever possible. But if you happen to have underscores, like, like in our case, you can just use one of the two very helpful Plink options to solve this problem in a quick way. And these two options are either double ID or constant FID. So a quick demonstration how to use these. If you include the dash dash double ID, it actually copies your ID also in the place of FID. So this is how it looks like. This is back already from the VCF file. So you see that the ID and FID are exactly the same. Personally, I like the other option using the constant FID better. So in this case, you have actually the option to specify any family ID that you desire. So in our case, I put it back to HFD. So for the Hereford, after we run this, we get the FID exactly as we specified for each individual. If you don't specify anything, there would be a column of zeros at the very beginning of the pet file. In addition, I want to highlight another potentially very useful option in Plink, and that is to replace the space characters in the VCF IDs if it's the case. In our case, it was not necessary because we didn't have any spaces. But in general, I know that dealing with spaces in file names and especially in IDs is a big pain. So having this option is really, really good to solve these situations in a quick way. 
in general, there is quite a bit of description for various other VCF related options in Plink. So if you are dealing with VCF files, I really recommend you to read this part of the Plink website. You get here by searching dash dash VCF in the quick index in the left side of the navigation panel, or if you specify this address in the browser. This is the new part of the video to highlight that you need to consider and be aware of the minor, major, and the reference allele status of SNPs. The SNPs on the SNP chips are biallelic, which means that the one allele is in one column called A1, and the other allele is in the other column A2. The default behavior of Plink is that it puts the major allele, so the allele that is more frequent for that particular population, as A2. Now, this does not necessarily the same as the reference allele status when we talk about its relation to the re reference genome. The transformation I showed you before, this is in line 14, does not consider reference allele status. So it just goes with the default blink behavior and puts the major allele as A2. If this is a problem for you, or if you really need to have the reference status intact or properly considered, you need to implement additional steps or well, just correctly consider this reference status. Now you can do this in various ways. One possibility is to use the dash dash keep allele order command in every one of your blink lines throughout the entirety of your pipeline. So this will keep the original A1 and A2 allele settings. Another possibility still within Plink is number two here. So to use the A2 allele and the dash dash real refer reference allele commands in your pipeline. And solution number three here is, which I call post Plink, is with another tool, the B BCF tools. And this could fix the reference allele status by using the file, the reference.fasta file. So this reference for but the FASTA file is, of course, for your particular organism you are working with. So by running this line, line 36 here, should fix the reference and alternative alias status for your organism, even if this would be messed up in Plink previously. Thanks to YouTube viewer ZVXC, VXCZ to pointing these things out. Here is the appropriate part from the Plink website about the A1, A2 allele status. Again, if the minor, major, and the reference allele status is relevant for your analysis, I highly, highly recommend you to go through this part and implement the appropriate options in your Plink pipeline. I know this part might be a bit tricky, but well, I just wanted to highlight an interesting piece of information here that also the Plink authors well, recognize this uh, uh, situation to be uh, somewhat uh, confusing. So here they say, we plan to turn off this behavior on the minor major allele and properly separate the minor major allele and the reference allele concepts in the Plink 2 release. So we hope to get a bit more clarity there. And if I'm remaking this video anyway, I decided to put in additional piece of information on this little code that might be interesting for well, some of you. It is about creating an output file for each individual in your data set. It is done with this neat little loop here, so I will explain how it works. But before, there are a few steps to prepare the input parameters for this loop. Out of convenience, we work with the tidyverse, so we need to load that library, and we actually need the binary pet file. So if you don't have your Plink files in the binary format, then you could run, well, this, this line. Otherwise, if you have it already in binary format, this is not necessary. Now, what we really need the binary pet format for is that this file, the fun file, which actually lists each individual in one line. And this is really useful for us because you can have hundreds and thousands and tens of thousands of individuals in your data files. And the goal is with this approach that you don't want to touch anything manually. So you don't want to make any copy paste or opening or creating of files of any kind in a 
conventional manual way. So you need to write a script that does everything by itself. So what we do here, we load this fun file into R. This is how it looks like for now for this particular data set. And what we really need is the first column, the FID, and the second column, the IID, to identify the individual we want to extract or, well, to use in the dash dash keep statement. So we need to save this individual into a file that I name here selected individual.txt. So what we really want to do is save the first two columns of this file into this text file and run the blink line, creating the VCF file or any other kind of file for this individual, then do the very same thing for the second individual, the third, fourth, and so on. The number of times this loop is run is indicated here. So it starts from one to the uh, specific number. And to make these scripts very flexible, we do not hard code here that we want this loop to be performed uh, 31 times because this 31 times would fit for this particular data set, but most likely it would not fit for the next data set you want to use. So instead of that, there is this neat little R function here, which is well, n row, and it's actually computes the number of lines in the IID file. So this is 31, but if you will have a different data set, it will compute the number of lines in your data set. The variable i here is a counter that which starts from one, two, three, and then it actually extracts the appropriate row in the process, which is then saved to the selected individual.txt, which is then used with the dash dash keep statement in the link run. To distinguish between the output files, so we name them as output files, including the counter variable. So your output file names will be output file one, two, three, four, according to the numbers of individuals you have. Of course, here I would also underline, especially if you want to create VCF files, so that this version again does not consider the reference alias status. So you either put here the appropriate options as we discussed before, or you rerun everything with the VCF tools in the follow-up steps. So now a bit of an explanation why it was necessary to remake this video. Well, sometime after the publication of the video, there a comment popped up that very correctly pointed out that the reference status is not correctly considered in the transformation to the VCF file. Now, immediately after this, I implemented a bit of a change and highlighted this fact in the title of the video and also the description of the video. But, well, this relies on the fact that the people actually read the title and the description, which is not always the case. So to ensure that everybody gets the message after they watch the video in full, well, it was just necessary to include these parts. There was an additional decision necessary if to keep or delete the original video. After some thought, I decided that I, I delete the original video just to ensure that this version is the only one that the people can see from now on. I did this a little bit with a heavy heart because, well, it was one of the most popular videos on the channel. But at the other hand, this was exactly the reason why it needed to be deleted because it was so popular and so many people checked it out. So I wanted to ensure that for all of you get the most appropriate information possible. So again, thank you, ZVXCVXCZ. Well, that was the username of the viewer. So thank you for pointing out this flow. And for all of you, please let me know in the comments below how you like this new version of the video. And now this is really the end. Thank you for your time and have a very nice day.